this. Who wants to try? Super squad. All the children, you can come past you. You can come past you if you want to. Awesome. So I'm going to check quickly. Let me just see. I think they're over here. Captain Kandu is ready to lift off in three, two, one. Yeah. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Yeah. Captain yeah. Kandu, what are you doing? Where are you going? Hello, Sparkle. I'm going to Jesus. You want to fly to heaven on one tank of petrol? Yes. I want to go to heaven to wish Jesus a happy birthday or a Merry Christmas or both. <laughs> you know, it's because of the birth of Jesus that we celebrate Christmas and I want to give him a gift. Okay, but Captain Gandu, you know that's not how it works. I understand that you are super excited to see Jesus, but it's not your time yet. Remember, there's a time and a season for everything. <laughs> Sparkle, you sound like a grandmother now. <laughs> but it's true, Captain Gandu. There's a time for everything. And you know, we both know what gift Jesus really wants. Yes, you're right, Sparkle. Today on Christmas, we are celebrating the birth of Jesus. Yes. And Sparkle, Why do you, you know, want to... Jesus is the best at giving gifts. Yes, Captain. But I also want to give him something too. Okay. Jesus gave us his life, oh. eternal life. Yes. He gave us the authority to use His name wow. in any situation. And Sparkle, when Jesus went to heaven, we received the gift of the Holy Spirit and the gift of praying in tongues. Wow. We also received the Word of God freely. Yes, that's and right. Jesus gave us the opportunity, the wonderful, wonderful, wonderful opportunity, wow. Sparkle. Guess what? To pray for others. Wow. Yeah. And Sparkle. Yes. Also to live for Him. Now that's very big. But Sparkle, there's many, many, many more of these wonderful gifts. All for free. Wow. And I can think of another very precious gift, Captain Kandu. It is time. Time. Yes, Time to pass on these gifts that you just told us about. Like when we help someone to become born again, then they have eternal life. And when we pray with someone to receive the Holy Spirit, then they can also pray in tongues. So Sparkle, we've received time to share these amazing gifts with everyone that Jesus has made available to all. That's right, but... But, you see, there's that word again. <laughs> but time is running out. The end is in sight. And you know what? We can help others to become born again only while we are on this earth, in this time. Not after the rapture when we are in heaven. We can only help others to receive the Holy Spirit while we are here. Not when we're in heaven. We can only help others. To, to understand the word of God while we are here, not after the rapture. We can only pray for others while we are here, not after the rapture. And we can only do what God asked us to do in this time that we have here on earth. And when the trumpet sounds, da -da -da -da, it's time out. Yes, then it's over, skid over, Captain can do. So we have to use time wisely, friends. Use every opportunity that you get. Use every day. Use every hour, every minute, every opportunity that you have with a friend. Friends, 
What do you think Jesus would like for Christmas? Let's tell them. Let's tell them. Can I tell them, Sparkle? So, friends, today on Christmas, we are celebrating the birth of Jesus all over the world. So, Jesus was born and he died for the sins of everyone all over the world. And Jesus, so in other words, Jesus came to this earth, he died. To save all people from sin. Wow, that's wonderful. And we have to share that with others. You see, Jesus died, but he's alive now because God raised him from the dead. And he lives through us now. How? We are his mouth and we are his hands on this earth. He wants to bless others through you. He wants to help others through you. He wants to, he wants to change lives through all of us. And that is how he lives through us. Sparkle, why do you think Jesus loves it so much when we tell other people about him and when we lead them to get born again? Because Jesus loves people. He loves everyone. And if someone becomes born again, then they will be with Jesus in heaven forever and ever and ever and ever. And that is what he wants. He wants to be with us. Wow. Yes, and that is the gift that we can give Jesus. So friends, if you, if you haven't done this yet, you can ask the Holy Spirit to teach you how to use your time wisely. And then today, when you gather with your family and friends, you can tell them the truth about Christmas and why Jesus was born. Yes. Thank you, Captain, can do that. And the sparkle. Best gift. Friends, please, 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 please make sure that they are born again. Yes. Thank you, friends. And Captain can do. May I please climb into that inner aeroplane now? Yes, Sparkle. Thank you. Will you help me? This is so cool. Look at all the buttons and the lights. What does this one do, Captain Can do? That's to start it, Sparkle. Oh. Oh, okay, and that one? That says turbo. No, 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 don't push that one. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Whoops, sorry. You remember a Christmas extravaganza, right? Yes, Sparkle. When you drove off on your bike without me, right? Yes, I'm sorry okay. about that. Well, bye for now. <laughs> bye, friends. <laughs> oh, glory to God. Hello, friends. <laughs> uh, listen, all the kiddies sitting here in front, if you go quietly back to your seats, after the service, they've got something they're going to give you at the doors. And if I look at you, I think each of you can get maybe two. I hope you've got enough. <laughs> okay, you can, they can take their seats, please. And then after the service, we're gonna give you a, a nice, what do you call it? Gift. With nice, I think there's ice cream in, if I haven't. Are they, are they in? Okay, wonderful. Merry Christmas, everyone. Please stand up and say Merry Christmas to 20 people. And I'm watching you.
Was it 20? Are you sure? <laughs> oh, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Well, like Sparkle and Captain Can Do said, we are celebrating Jesus' birthday. Was he born on the 25th of December? No. No. But even you, you don't know when you were born. Your mother told you. And then your father said, you know, I'm sure your mother was wrong. It was two days before. <laughs> or your auntie said, your mother had it all wrong. So the date doesn't matter. Do they celebrate Jesus' birthday in heaven? No. They don't. The only thing now that they celebrate in heaven is when a sinner gives his life to God. The only celebration going on in heaven. Every time that someone gets born again, there's a celebration in heaven. They don't celebrate. They don't go, oh, Jesus, happy birthday. Mm -mm. Why did he come? He came for the world. He came for the world. Give me John 10.10 10 in the AMPC. Watch. He says, the thief comes only in order to steal, kill, and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life. That is why he came. Did he succeed in what he came for? Did he succeed in what he came for? Yes. How do we know he succeeded? How do we know? His resurrection out of the grave meant that God ex accepted the price that Jesus paid. So when we celebrate, we don't just celebrate Jesus' birth. We celebrate his birth, his death, his resurrection, and his ascension. You say, why do we celebrate all of those things? And I'm going to show you what is the next thing that we're looking forward to. Why do we celebrate those things? Because his birth was a miracle. Remember the elephant and the ant? He had to become what we are to die for us. So his birth was a miracle. His death was a miracle because he commanded his own death. They couldn't kill him. They couldn't kill him. When he said, my father, my father, why have you forsaken me? Jesus died spiritually on the cross at that moment. If he didn't die spiritually, he would never have died physically. Because right after that, he said, in your hands, I give my spirit. He commanded his own death. Why did he die spiritually? Because at that moment, sin was laid on him. So what is spiritual death? Is separation from God. That is what he dreaded when he prayed in the garden. He was not scared of death. No. He, 
He dreaded, he didn't want to be separated from his father. Remember in the garden, Adam and Eve, when did they die spiritually? When they were separated from God. How did they get separated? When they sinned. Remember the flaming swords at the entrance of the garden and they were chucked out of the garden? Mm -hmm. They were separated from God then. So then, oh, daiki korobos sataye. His resurrection was positive proof that God accepted the price that he paid. He that did no sin, remember, Jesus never sinned. He was pure. He was holy. He now made it with his resurrection. He made it now possible for you and I to become. Listen, he made it possible that you and I can become exactly the same as him. A child of God. Born of God. Born of incorruptible seed. So when you were born the first time, you came in with the life of a man, your daddy's life. When you get born again, you get born of the life of God. That means you have this, ay, 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 you have the same life in you as what is in God now. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. That is the gospel. He didn't come to, to wash our sins away. He didn't come uh, so, so that you can... Um, uh, Just be washed so that you can change. No. He came that you could become a new creation. So, listen, something that never existed before. That is why you must understand salvation to live the authentic Christian life. Many don't understand it. Many Christians that love Jesus, they don't understand what it means to be born again. When you're born again, you are holy. When you're born again, you are sin free. Uh, mm, that's why John said, that which is born of God cannot sin. Why? Because the sin nature has been taken out of that person. And he has been given a new nature. The nature of God. Who's here for the first time? Can I just see by hands? Okay, wonderful. You're very welcome, okay? Maybe this sound like like, what is this man saying? I'm telling you this morning what it means to be a child of God. It's not the child of God. is not one that, that struggles with sickness. A child of God is not one that is poor. A child of God is not one that fails. All of those are consistent. With the nature of a human being. The child of God has the nature of God. Supernatural. Supernatural. Now you must educate yourself to start living, start walking as a child of God. That is you, your owners. The owners is on you. God will not do it for you. He has given you that nature. You've got the same nature as God. That is why, yeah, 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 yeah. A child of God can do whatever Jesus did when he was on this earth, a child of God can do. 
Remember Peter, when Jesus said, come, he was walking on water. They were so scared in that boat. Then Jesus said, come. He, he said, if that's you, Jesus, tell me to come. He said, come. What did Peter do? He got out of the boat. He did exactly the same as what Jesus did. He walked on water. Because Jesus wanted to show us that it's possible to live like God. Then his ascension. <laughs> when I met Pastor, Pastor Chris, when I, when I saw him now in, in November, he said to me, he asked me how was the conference, and I said to him, this may sound um, strange. I said, but Jesus became Lord of my life in this conference. I just got a revelation of the greatness of Jesus Christ. Now, if you get a revelation of the greatness of Jesus Christ, you get a revelation of who you are. Because you are a joint heir with him. You see, religion won't tell you that. Because religion always want to become. Religion is always striving to please God. You don't, if you're born again, you don't need to please God. He's pleased with you. Because you've got the same nature as what he has got. Now he says, son, live as a child of mine. Live. There's, amen. Watch, the ascension. Don't, <clears throat> I've only got a few seconds, so I don't want to digress. The ascension of Jesus Christ. Let's read. Give me, give me Acts. Watch. After saying this, Jesus, give me from verse 8. Uh, Jesus' last words, watch, watch. But, but you shall receive power, my God. Which power? God's power. Who will receive it? You. <laughs> the same power. Not a, not a little bit of it. Not 80%, 20% or 50% of it. The whole blinking bunch. <laughs> but you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be my witnesses to me in Jerusalem. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. Yeah? After saying this, can you see why the Holy Ghost is so important? You cannot live this Christian life without the Holy Spirit. It's impossible. You say, but, yeah. After saying this, he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching. And they could no longer see him. He was talking to them. About 400, 500 of them. He was speaking to them. Then he was taken up. Remember, he didn't vanish. He was standing in front of them. His brothers were in that group. His brothers, James, was in that group. James never believed in Jesus. He never believed Jesus was God when he stayed with him in the house. He never believed Jesus was God when he was raised out of the dead. They said to him, hey, you better be careful. If the Romans get you, they will kill you again. You must stop your nonsense now. But when he was in that crowd and he saw 
Jesus. Just lifting, 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 lifting. They were dumbstruck. They just looked. They've never seen it. They've never seen a man float upwards like a feather. And they were watching, watching, watching till they couldn't see him anymore. Till he was in the clouds. Now, Paul is telling us what those clouds were. Those clouds weren't these clouds that you see that bring rain on the earth. No. It was a cloud of witnesses that received him. Where did that cloud of witnesses go? They went with Jesus to heaven. But watch. While they were watching and they could no longer see him. Yeah. As they strained to see him rising into heaven. Two white robed men suddenly stood among them. Just appeared. Men. 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 If you think angels has got wings. No. They will appear as men. Men. Men of Galilee, they said. Why are you standing here staring into heaven? Jesus has been taken from you into heaven. Oh, oh, there's that word. There's that word again. Are you seeing it? There's that word again. But, woohoo, woohoo, someday, and that is the day I want to talk to you about. But someday he will return from heaven in the same way you saw him go. In exactly the same way. This is not the rapture. This is not the rapture. The rapture is going to take place before this day. This day, that cloud of witnesses that received him, those clouds, witnesses that received him, those were all the Old Testament folks. They were Elijah, Elisha, Moses, um, uh, Israel, Jacob, uh, all, of, all of those, the patriarchs, they were the ones that received him in that cloud. When he comes back, Relax. Watch. He will return from heaven in the same way. That means a cloud of witnesses is returning with him. Who are those witnesses? Everyone that got born again. Is returning with Jesus Christ. That is how we're returning. And it's not going to be we return zhuk and we're on the earth. No. We will be in the air. You know that the earth turned. How long does it take the earth to turn? 24 hours. We will be in that air for 24 hours. For everyone on this globe to see us. Coming with the master. That is the second coming of Jesus. Before the second coming of Jesus. There's going to be raptures. First flight is soon. Very soon. You better get your ticket. Your ticket is to be born again. If, you haven't, if you're not born again, you haven't got a ticket. If you want to enter a plane, they say, where's your boarding pass? You say, I haven't got a boarding pass. They, you say, I've paid. They said, where's your boarding pass? No, go. You can't enter here. Your ticket to enter is being born again. 
That is your ticket. If you haven't got a ticket, today is your time to get a ticket. You need a ticket, brother. Tell your neighbor, you need a ticket. Tell your other neighbor, you need a ticket. <laughs> you're not going to enter without a ticket. No, you're not. You're not. You say, maybe by my good works, maybe because I'm a good guy, maybe because I've done so much good, maybe because I've given so much. No. they all like filthy rags. Only, ha, ya, 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 only righteous, holy people are going to enter. And when you get born again, you become righteous and holy. Because you beget the same nature as what God is. Did you hear what I just said? As what God is. A cat give birth to a cat. Sheep will give birth to a lamb, to sheep. A dog gives birth to a dog. A human gives birth to a human. And then God gives birth to someone like him. To someone like him. That is why the scriptures say, born again of incorruptible seed. In incorruptible. So only those with a righteous, holy nature is coming back with him. And I'm in that number. This is the thing that I'm looking forward to. And don't fool yourself. The stage has been set. These kids that you saw here won't have kids. The stage has been set. I know your grandfather said, and many said that now the rapture is going to take place. And, and they even said of Mandela that he was the Antichrist because they put triple six in his number, in his prison number. No. If you look at the word, the end is here. Now just look at it. Just look how blessed we are. We are the ones to close this thing that God made, this earth, that he made for humans. All the animals that he made so man can can have dominion over them. All the beauty that he's made, we are the ones to close the curtain on everything here. We are the generation. We are the generation to turn. This thing of the rapture is going to take place in the next couple of years. If I say to you, the whole world will come to a lockdown. Everyone will go into his home and just sit in his home. You would have said to me, nonsense. It's never happened. It will never happen. Waar kom jy vandaan? Jylle wereld toemaak. I want to remind you what happened in 2020. The whole world closed. The whole world closed. Everyone in his home, scared of a virus that didn't exist. Scared of a virus that never existed. But God told us about that. He told us about that. And then, Russia, China, Iran, everyone is now taking his place so quickly. If you read in the word, you read about them. You, they all taking their place now. For what? As we are preparing for the rapture, the children of the devil is preparing for the Antichrist. One 
world order, one world religion, one world economy. Bitcoin was a forerunner. Look what they are saying now. The dollar is not going to be the currency anymore soon, soon. There's going to be another cu- What are they doing? They're preparing for the great reset. But you know what, brothers and sisters? We will not be here when they're trying to reset everything. Because while we're here, they cannot reset anything. Because God has given us dominion. They are living in our world. We will not live in their world. But when we have left, they can live in their own world. Make sure that you've got a ticket for the rapture. To have that ticket is to be born again. You cannot have a ticket without being born again. You say, what does it mean to be born again? It means to make Jesus Christ Lord of your life. Because when you do that, you are saying, I receive his life in me now. I don't have the human life in me now anymore. I have the life of God in me. You make him, Jesus, Lord of your life. He's the only way. So I'm going to ask you to bow your heads, please. If there's anyone here this morning that wants to have his ticket, that wants to be born again, I'm going to ask you to put up your hand that I can pray with you. Quickly, quickly, just put up your hand. Quick, 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 quick. Put it up high that I can see your hand. Wherever you are. I see that hand at the back. I see that hand. I see that hand. Okay. Let's see if you're serious. Come forward. Come, you that have put up your hand. Come. to God. Right. There were more there, but it's up to you. No one can force you to have a ticket, not even God. Not even God. Everyone that's in heaven is there by free choice. Everyone that is in hell is there by free choice is a choice is a choice God gave us the power of choice and he will never override your power of choice never amen thank you Lord okay I'm going to lead you in a prayer And after you have prayed this prayer, you're going to pray it out loud, okay? Are you you hearing me, both of you? And then repeat after me. Say, Father God, I come to you this morning. Your word says, Whosoever calls on the name of Jesus shall be saved. I ask Jesus, to come into my life, to be Lord of my life. I believe Jesus is not dead. He's alive and he's in heaven. I now make Jesus Lord of my life and I receive his life in me. I'm born again now. I'm a child of God now. Hallelujah. Give them a big hand. You can, you can just follow that, that lady quickly. We want to give you a gift from the ministry. Right. There's now a party going on in heaven. They're not celebrating his birthday. They're celebrating those two that just came in.